Welcome to Abbeyfield Heritage Trail. The following is a brief synopsis of some of the locations, individuals and events that have played a significant part in the shaping of the historical and heritage aspects of our beloved Abbeyfield and often the wider region. Location number one, the square. Site of Cistercian Abbey, the square, 1188-1580. A heritage plaque identifies the entrance to the site of the original Cistercian Abbey, which was founded in 1188 by Donal O'Brien, King of Limerick, Tormund and Munster. A drawing sketched in 1655 shows the ruins of the abbey alongside a multi-storey tower, which had direct line of sight to Port Castle, further down the river field. The abbey, along with other buildings, were destroyed by Sir William Pelham and his army in March 1580 as part of the Desmond Wars. Stones from the ruined abbey were later used to build a thatched chapel on the same site mid-1700s, in which a famous meeting later took place in 1840 to discuss the destitute plight of 600 men, women and children living in the surrounding area. There is an adjacent heritage plaque which commemorates this meeting and the efforts made to improve the lives of those in need. A small section of the ruins from that thatched chapel still exists today and now forms part of one of the oldest and continuously used cemeteries in the country, stretching back over 800 years to when the first monks settled in Abbeyfield. Location number two, the square. Reverend William Casey Monument, the square. A monument proudly stands in the centre of the square Abbeyfield to commemorate the life of Reverend William Casey, who was affectionately known as the People's Priest. Born in 1844 and ordained in 1868, he arrived in Abbeyfield on a temporary basis in 1869 and in 1871 was appointed permanently. First as a curate and then from 1883 as administrator and parish priest. In December 1872 he first came to prominence when he rode a horse into a nearby flooded river field to save the lives of a number of young men who were surrounded by a rising flood and without whose help were destined to drown. This incident would set the tone by which Father Casey would become known and much loved over the following 30 plus years. Very much a man of the people, during his time in Abbeyfield he was instrumental in the setting up of two schools, a temperance society, a temperance hall, Abbeyfield Athletics Club, Abbeyfield Football Team and Abbeyfield Brass Band, along with the setting up of fever hospitals during the 1883 fever pandemic. A great supporter of the common people, he was a member of the Irish National Land League and often attracted crowds of five to 10,000 people when speaking at monster meetings in towns and villages throughout the region. William Casey died aged 63 on the 29th of December 1907. A crowd of over 12,000 people arrived in Abbeyfield to attend his funeral. To understand the immense respect and gratitude the people of Abbeyfield and Ireland had for this individual, it was they who raised the funding to have the finest example of a monument erected in his honour. The monument was unveiled on the third anniversary of his death on the 29th of December 1910. Location number three, the square. Richard J. Hayes. World War II Codebreaker, 1902 to 1976. A heritage plaque identifies the building in the square 
formerly known as the National Bank, where Richard James Hayes was born in 1902 and where his father was a residing bank manager. Following a move by his family to another bank, he later obtained a degree in languages from Trinity College Dublin and went on to work at the National Library of Ireland. It was while working as a director at the National Library that he came to the attention of the Irish Secret Service during World War II for his unique ability to break complex letter-based ciphers and in particular Nazi codes. He was given the fake military identity of Captain Grey and given a free hand at interviewing several captured spies that he personally located hiding in Ireland from the various codes that he deciphered. Both MI5 in the UK and the Office of Strategic Services in the USA praised his brilliance, describing him under such terms as a genius and a colossus of a man, and of which they could not have done without. Location number four, the square. Princess Christina de Bellioso, 1808 to 1871. A heritage plaque identifies the building in the square, formerly known as Leahy's Inn, where Princess Christina de Bellioso is registered in old business records on the 2nd of October 1839 as hiring four horses, Mouse, Jack, Paul and Nancy, and two drivers, Brown and Fowl, for her onward journey by carriage following her visit to Abbey Field. These are the only known records of her stay in Ireland. Christina came from a privileged Italian background, married a prince at 16, separated shortly afterwards, and became involved with revolutionaries in the fight for Italy's independence. She lost her huge inheritance due to her actions and was forced into exile in France. She bought an apartment in Paris raised funding for a saloon, which then became a focal point for intellectuals and revolutionaries across Europe, and all of this by the age of 22. She arrived in Ireland to avoid an assassination attempt on her and her daughter's lives. Nine years following her visit to Ireland and Abbey Field, she funded and commanded her own army into war, but again her efforts failed. Shortly afterwards, she and her daughter went into exile in the Middle East and Turkey. But in 1856, she returned again to Italy, this time through the political system, where independence was finally accomplished in 1861. She then retired and later died near her beloved city of Milan, aged 63. Location number five, the square. Daniel O'Connell, 1775 to 1847. A heritage plaque identifies the building in the square, formerly known as Leahy's Inn, where Daniel O'Connell, affectionately known as the Liberator, along with other members of his family, were registered numerous times in old business records between 1836 and 1842. These business records relate predominantly to the hiring of horses and drivers for their carriages on various journeys to and from Dublin and their home in Derrynane in County Kerry. Daniel was a well-known barrister and later an even more powerful politician. He is best known for his campaign for Catholic emancipation, the right of Irish Catholics to sit in Parliament, his opposition to tithes the payments by everyone in Ireland to the English Church, and his campaign for the repeal of the Union, Ireland to be able to govern itself. He is also known for shooting dead John de in a duel in 1815 after refusing to apologise for comments he made about Dublin Corporation. Daniel died in 1847, aged 71. His heart is buried in Rome, and his body buried in Glasnevin, County Dublin. (music) 
Location number six, Church Street, St. Mary's Church, 1846 to 1968. A heritage plaque identifies the site on Church Street where the original St. Mary's Church once stood. Known locally as the Famine Church, it was built largely from donations by parishioners just prior to the Great Famine. Some of the stones used came from an earlier thatched chapel located at the old abbey site in the square. A newer church was subsequently built up the town in 1968 and St. Mary's was eventually knocked to make way for what is now St. Mary's Boys National School. The same heritage plaque commemorates the life of Reverend William Casey, who is also commemorated by the Reverend William Casey Monument in the centre of the square. Location number seven, Church Street. Abbeyfield Temperance Hall, 1872 to 1920. A heritage plaque identifies the site on the corner of Church Street and Listowel Road of the original Temperance Hall, which was adjacent to the then St. Mary's Church. The multifunctional community hall was also home to the very popular Abbeyfield Brass Band. In September 1920, the British formed Royal Irish Constabulary Special Reserve Force, better known in Ireland as the Black and Tans, due to the colour of their uniform, went on a rampage of the town. The looting, burning and grenade bombing of several buildings and private homes took place along with the shooting dead of two innocent young men. On one of these excursions, a group of black and tan soldiers broke down the gate and kicked in the door of the temperance hall before setting it on fire, resulting in the destruction of the building and the loss of almost all of the instruments belonging to the members of the brass band. The band never recovered and the building of the new community hall further up the town was undertaken a few years later. That new building is now known as St. Ida's Hall on Convent Street and was opened on New Year's Night 1928. Location number 8, Lower Main Street. Charles Bianconi, 1786 to 1875. A heritage plaque identifies the building known locally as Eglistons on the corner of Main Street and Church Street, which was once the site of one of the largest stagecoach depots in the country in the mid 1800s. It was operated by Italian Irish entrepreneur and developer of public transportation in Ireland, Charles Bianconi. It was one of a number of sites in Abbeyfield registered to Mr. Bianconi in Griffith's Valuation of Ireland, which was completed in 1853. Carlo Bianconi was born in Italy in 1786 and changed his name to Charles when he arrived in Ireland in 1802 at age 16. He began working in Dublin and shortly afterwards moved to Clonmel in County Tipperary, where in 1815 he began developing his idea for a more streamlined form of public transportation. Charles established regular horse-drawn carriage services on various routes, costing one and a quarter pennies per mile. He further modified his services after the introduction of railways offering connections to and from various railway stations. Location number 9, Lower Main Street. Pat McAuliffe, Stucco Artist, 1846 to 1921. A heritage plaque identifies the building, traditionally known as W.D. O'Connor's on Main Street which is deemed to be the finest example of work done by stucco and architectural artist Pat McAuliffe. Not alone is it considered the most elaborate Celtic design of his lifetime, but includes both Latin and Anglo-Saxon phrases 
to attract inquiring minds. Vita brevis ad longa, life is short, art is long, appears at the top of the corner overlooking Main Street. Underneath is a scrolled text, which was an Anglo-Saxon agricultural fertility charm, perfect for a market town like Abbeyfield. Pat McAuliffe lived all his life in Listowel County, Kerry. Without any formal training in art or design, he used his skills as a roofer and a plasterer to begin experimenting in the casting and moulding of concrete. Self-taught, he was considered a master of his trade and decorated the facades of over 50 homes and businesses in the North Kerry, West Limerick region. Pat married Catherine Gleason, had eight children, and died in this dole in 1921. Location number 10, Killarney Road. Harnett Healy Monument. A monument identifies the location of the Killarney Road, approximately 10 minutes walk from the town centre where two friends, Patrick Harnett and Jeremiah Healy, were murdered in 1920 by a black and tan soldier. On September the 20th, 5.55 p.m., Jeremiah Healy, a young apprentice blacksmith, was coming to the end of his day's work at Begley's Forge on what was then Barrack Street, today Bridge Street. As he left his place of work, he was joined by his friend Patrick Harnett a local postman who lived in the Harnett family home next to Begley's Forge. Together, just as the church bell rang out at 6pm, the two friends walked out the Killarney Road to check on a dead horse they had heard about earlier in the day. Unknown to them, a notorious black and tan soldier by the name of Huckabee was quietly watching from the barrack across the street. As Jeremiah and Patrick began their walk, Huckabee, with a gun strapped to his tie, crossed the street and followed them out the road. Approximately ten minutes later, both Jeremiah and Patrick had been shot dead. Location number 11, Limerick Greenway, Port Castle, Ruins, circa 1400s to 1700s. A viewing area and large information board on the Limerick Greenway, approximately 40 minute walk from the old railway station in Abbeyfield, identifies the site of the ruins of Port Castle. Although within touching distance of the Greenway, it is at times difficult to see due to overgrown trees. However, this once 17th century tower house and castle, which itself stands on the same site of an earlier 15th century fort, and which was originally known as the Fort of the Three Enemies, has been central to a number of significant aspects of regional and national politics and history between the 15th and 17th centuries. Thomas Fitzgerald, 5th Earl of Desmond, was forcefully disposed of all of his lands and his title in 1418 by his uncle James Fitzgerald after Thomas fell in love with and married Catherine McCormick of Abbeyfield, who was a daughter of one of Thomas's dependents, William the Monk of Field McCormick. The marriage did not comply with the Statutes of Kilkenny, a series of laws which severely and forcibly restricted relationships between those of Norman descent and those of Gaelic descent. Thomas and Catherine's love for each other and subsequent marriage effectively broke every rule in the book and cost them their entire fortune. They were forced to flee to France, where Thomas died two years later. However, he was so highly regarded that both the King of England and the King of France attended his funeral in Paris. The poet Thomas Moore wrote a love ballad entitled Desmond's Song, which began, 
by the fields wave benighted, no star in the skies. To thy door, by love lighted, I first saw those eyes. Some voice whispered o'er me, as the threshold I crossed, there was ruin before me. If I loved, I was lost. In 1580, on the 16th of March, Sir William Pelham and his army, who were loyal to Queen Elizabeth I of England, plundered and destroyed Port Castle, along with the Abbey in Abbey Field. This followed on from Pelham's earlier slaughter of 400 men, women and children at Clonahard Woods between Shannagolden and Ate on the 12th of March, while searching for the then Earl of Desmond, Gerald Fitzgerald. 1583, on the 28th of April, Earl of Desmond, Gerald Fitzgerald, while staying in Abbey Field, writes a letter to Queen Elizabeth I asking for a truce in the ongoing war. However, Queen Elizabeth did not respond. Again in 1583, 11th of November, Gerald Fitzgerald, the last Earl of Desmond, was murdered in Ballymacalliget County Kerry by local forces loyal to Queen Elizabeth I and who were subsequently rewarded a ransom for same. This effectively put an end to the 500,000 acre empire that was the Earldom of Desmond and the beginning of a new wave of foreign ownership of most of the province of Munster. Thank you for taking the time and the interest in Abbeyfield Heritage Trail.